Before the parades and propaganda in America began, the war in Europe broke out. On June 28, 1914, Archduke Francis Ferdinand was assassinated by Serbian nationalists. On the other side of the ocean, America remained neutral. This was largely due to the fact that many different European ethnic groups populated it. But when Germany started to threaten America by breaking the Sussex Pledge, which restricted submarine warfare, and sending the Zimmerman Note, which was Germany attempting to form a secret alliance with Mexico if America declared war on them, America was forced to step in. Progressivist George Creel was chosen to lead the committee during World War I, dramatically changing the way the public viewed the war through his ways of presenting the war so that no one could possibly miss it. Without his efforts, the war most likely would not have been won by America and the Allies. After this, he went on to creating a weekly journal called The Independent. And after The Independent was sold, he wrote for the Rocky Mountain News, Harper's Weekly, Century, Everybody's Magazine, and co-authored Children Bondage before getting into the government. Or an Creel supported Wilson's presidential campaign by writing Wilson and the issues. He was offered a position in the government after Wilson was elected, but turned it down. Although he turned down that first offer, when he learned of the position in charge of wartime publicity, he couldn't have been more eager to jump on board. Americans in general were not keen on entering the war. The majority of the population was either neutral or against the war. To combat this, he started off by creating the first daily newspaper produced by the federal government, called The Official Bulletin. It prided itself on being unbiased, although there was a newsreel conveyed about what our homeboys are doing in the front line trenches. Creel was able to monitor and deem what was acceptable to the war effort and what was not. The Espionage Act and the Sedition Act were passed in 1917 and 1918, which gave them the power to do so. This was the beginning of censorship and the American public's right to know in America. The committee itself was not allowed to engage in censorship, but since Creel was on the censorship board, the Committee on Public Information was given that privilege. With this position, he and the committee he headed basically controlled the way media flowed. With the power of censorship, he was able to betray America as saving Europe from the British Germany and keep under wraps some of the more worse things the Allies did. To really get people to notice though, and not be able to just turn a blind eye to the war, Creel went even farther in his effort. He made it so that the committee spanned out from just the newspaper to create many different varieties of propaganda, from wartime advertisements to wartime movies. With the assistance from D.W. Griffith, a well-known film director at the time, the committee was able to create movies that supported the war and were popular as well. The movies actually made money for the war, around $852,744, which in today's amount is $403 million. Apart from Griffith, other well-known people were recruited, such as Tarbell, Baker, Steffens, as well as John Sargo, Upton Sinclair, and Jane Addams. The largest feat they were able to accomplish was probably gathering around 75,000 volunteers to speak on behalf of the war. These volunteers, known as Four Minute Men, spoke to large crowds at any time, talking about joining the draft or what evil was Germany was doing. The most well-known form of propaganda would be the war poster. Everywhere a person looked, Uncle Sam would be watching telling you that he wants you for the U.S. Army. Posters littered people's vision, not allowing them to go on with their daily lives and escape seeing the rousing messages. The committee was responsible for schools getting involved in instilling nationalism into its students, which basically raised the country to be patriotic. They handed out various pamphlets, such as American and the Allied Ideals, to mold the young minds of these students. Songs, such as Where Do We Go From Here, I Have Come To Say Goodbye, and Over There, got attention and also caught on. Other forms to get attention for the war that were used were advertisements, cartoons, and state fair exhibits. All these individual things belong to various divisions within the Committee on Public Information, such as the Division of News, 
which dealt with all information released to the press for the American public to see. All of his efforts can be seen in the final outcome of the war. America gave their allies the edge they needed to win. To even enter the war, the American population needed to support it so that the troops and supplies could be sent to war. So without Creole revving up America's war fever, America would have not been able to give the crucial assist to the allies that led them to victory. It brought the war to people's attention and made it impossible to ignore. Besides being impossible to ignore, it made supporting the war something interesting to watch progress as well as something entertaining. Things such as parades, music, or movies captivated people's attention and drew the American public in. When the war met its end, so did the Committee on Public Information. There was no use for a war supporting committee with no war to support. Although the committee ended, Bill did not stop his writings. He wrote several different books, one of which being How We Advertised America. Besides writing books, he served the San Francisco Labor Board and went on to being the chairman of the National Advisory Board of Works Progress Administration. He even ran to be the Democratic nominee for governor of California. He lost the nomination and from then on gave the rest of his time to writing. On October 2, 1953, George Creel died at the age of 76. Through his work during the war and the way he led the Committee on Public Information, Creel was able to gain the much-needed support and give America the boost they needed to win. Oh!